wonderful lecture, Dr. Kim. Um, I always say that, you know, people ask me, do you do your own statistics? And I say, I don't expect the statistician to put brackets on a patient, so why should I do my own statistics? So I feel that all the classes that I have taken in statistics has helped me to understand what they're doing, but I let the professionals do their job. So thank you very much. I agree 100% with you. So, but today I'm going to talk about my area of research. I'm kind of a... Uh, um, someone that is uh, unique because I am an orthodontist interested in public health, specifically in global oral health. And many people will say that orthodontists, um, they don't have a role in public health, and I will disagree with it. I think that we do, and we have to have more representations of uh, our profession there. But when we talk about um, oral health-related quality of life, what do we, how do we define that? So we will say that this is standard of health of the oral and related tissues which enables an individual to go around life and um, enables them to do all the functions that any other person um, will do. We can also say that clinically determined poor oral health includes the presence of dental caries and malocclusion. So dental caries have been seen and continues to be seen as a silent um, epidemic. We can find um, highest levels of caries in uh, Latin America and in some developed countries like Canada, for instance, and the lowest in, um, in Africa. In terms of malocclusion, I strongly believe that this should be considered a public health problem due to its impact in quality of life. And although it has been um, declared the third highest oral uh, priority by the World Health Organization, the majority of orthodontists, they don't focus on um, malocclusion as an oral health problem. So this is an, um, an incredible, um, um, how will I say, big study that they started as a very small study and has grown um, really um, in, in levels that it was hard to imagine. We right now have two, uh, 4,000 samples after two years of um, data collection. This involves three countries, um, involves by now more than eight sites, and we had at least uh, six universities involved in this, um, in this project. So the instruments that we use here, we use the uh, child oral health impact profile to assess the quality of life. We use the uh, index that we all know to determine carriers, that is the uh, DMFS, and in terms of malocclusion, I use um, the ICON index. So the COHIP, for some of you who are not familiar with this index, is an index that has five domains. The first one um, assess oral health, the second one functional, the third one the social and the emotional well-being of the individual, the fourth one the school relationships, and the fifth uh, one the self-image. In terms of the ICON, we have uh, five components of the ICON index, the aesthetic assessment, the upper arch crowding, uh, cross bite, incisors open bite and over bite, and the anterior posterior buccal segment. So for each of the individuals, we collected 80 variables. So this is just one subject. So, so far we have been able to analyze eight of the main variables and we still have tons and tons of data to analyze. We have looked into the parents' cultural perception in terms of the attitudes that they have uh, for um, dental health. We look at the diet. Um, we look at the self-perception of their aesthetics. So we have an incredible amount of data that we have not been able to, to analyze so far. So the data that we analyze, this is what um, we have um, ha um, come up with. So one of the, uh, the areas that we studied first was um, the north of Mexico in an area that is um, surrounding the city of Monterrey in Mexico. Why did we pick this area? Because it's a very um, industrial city that has five million of people living. It's very close to the border with the US and you can find all the different socioeconomic strata versus rural and even indigenous population um, living in the same um, area. 
So we had four um, schools that we compare with. One of them, um, Colegio Inglés, that I, uh, this is the pointer? No, okay. So Colegio Inglés, that Does we anybody were, have a here, here, I, I, got the, I, got the, I got the arrow, perfect. A Colegio Inglés is a private English school, and then the other three schools are middle to low socioeconomic status. As you can see, in terms of the carriers prevalence, the Colegio Inglés have a high, high rate of no carriers within um, their population. When we talk about orthodontic treatment need, we can observe the same. The majority of the students in Colegio Inglés, they don't have any treatment need because most of these students have already, if they needed any type of orthodontic treatment, they, have, they were able to access to, um, to an orthodontic treatment. Compared to the other schools, so the percentage of treatment is, uh, is quite high. But the question that remains here is how these results, how these levels will affect the quality of life of these individuals. And if we look at the first school here, this is Apodaca, this is a rural community in the outskirts of the city of Monterrey. Uh, I would say low socioeconomic status. And we can say that in terms of malocclusion, it does not affect them whatsoever. And in fact, none of the five domains seems to, find, uh, to have an effect in terms of the severity of the malocclusion. And this goes around the other three schools that again, some of them are rural and with low socioeconomic status. But when we look at Colegio Inglés, that is a private school in a more affluent part of Monterrey, sorry, we can see that the, um, the level of the severity of the malocclusion directly affects the quality of life. These results um, were significant. We also look at an indigenous population. This indigenous population is in the state of Chiapas in Mexico. They have, um, a, a, it's a very isolated population. And, uh, and again, this is in the, in the mountains in Mexi Mexico. This is to show you how primitive um, it is. We were going in a truck, uh, driving six hours in the border between Mexico and uh, Guatemala. And we ran out of gas, and we were hoping that someone would come and rescue us, and, and, and they did. We were very lucky because it is very, very isolated. To give you an idea, the first car came only five years ago in this population. We didn't have any communication. They didn't have internet. Uh, all the communications will stop at 10 p.m., so extremely, extremely isolated. The level of carriers was tremendous. I think that only one student out of the 400 students that we examined, only one had no carriers. And the median DMFS was of eight. So an incredible, incredible amount of carriers. And the question is, why do they have this tremendous amount of carriers? And it's because of the diet. These kids, they didn't have enough nutrition during the day. Most of them, they report that they will only have one meal per day. But this is an area that produce coffee. So these kids will have coffee in the morning, at lunch, and at night with a lot of sugar. And I asked the question, why will they be drinking coffee? And it's to curb the appetite. They, didn't, they were not getting the nutrition that they needed. Therefore, they needed the coffee to keep them alert at the school and curb their appetite. And they also, they had this mix with cacao because they produced the cacao, the chocolate there as well. So all of this was influenced the incredible amount of caries prevalence that I see in this community. In terms of malocclusion, the same. Uh, really, 37% uh, of the students had an unmet treatment need for orthodontists. Um, only one student had had some type of brackets. I saw the, the student and I said, who put these brackets? And they didn't, they didn't have a dentist in the, in the area. So I said, who, who placed those brackets? And I think that there was someone there who was doing that kind of a hobby. So they put in the brackets there. It, it was quite uh, unusual. Um, and here we are, 400 students. And something that was very significant in this population is that high, high prevalence of class three, hyperdiversion, very, very long phases. 
And again, I think that there is a great significant um, genetic component in this type of results that we see because most of them, um, they pretty much look the same. So what about the quality of life? How this incredible amount of carriers, these really severe malocclusions affect their quality of life? Zero, none, absolutely none. If you look at the quality of life versus malocclusion here, absolutely none. One of the, uh, one of the uh, questions that we ask in the questionnaire is like, they consider as guapo. That means, do you find yourself, you know, good looking? Everybody answered yes, 10, from zero to 10. I wanted to have that self-esteem. I was thinking, wow, this is amazing. In an incredible self-esteem, and again, the same thing. They all looked the same. They were so genetically isolated. This, this community was descended from the Mayans, the original Mayans. Uh, it's a tribe that is called the Mames tribe. So they were isolated, therefore, everybody looked the same. In fact, when they saw me there, although you know, I was able to communicate with them in Spanish, they were laughing all the time because they saw us as being very different from them. So none, zero, absolutely zero impact of the malocclusion and the, uh, the carriers in their quality of life. So we decided to look at another indigenous community. But these indigenous communities is somehow not as much isolated as Chiapas. This is very close to Cancun, actually. So uh, they're exposed somehow to the tourism. They know, you know, a lot of uh, things, so they have access to internet. And we wanted to see if they have the same type of uh, results. This is in Merida, also very close to, in the Yucatan Peninsula, very close to Cancun. So in this population, we examined 335 subjects. And again, a high prevalence of carriers, but not as much as the population in Chiapas. In terms of malocclusion, again, 44% had an unmet orthodontic treatment need. Very close to the results in Chiapas, and the same results in terms of the impact in quality of life, zero did not impact whatsoever. There was no relationship between the carriers and the quality of life and between the severity of malocclusion and the quality of life, zero. So I'm gonna show you the last population because we don't have much time here. And this one is in Peru. This is in Lima, Peru. And again, Lima is a very uh, upcoming city, very, very modern city with access to internet and, and so on. And we look at two schools, so we had a very large sample size here, and they, um, they were in the city of Lima, but from low to middle class socioeconomic status. So the prevalence of caries was quite high, and uh, the prevalence of malocclusion high as well. And in this population, it did affect the quality of life. It was proportionate to the severity of the carriers to their quality of life. The same with malocclusion. Directly por proportionally, the severity of malocclusion, the orthodontic treatment need with their quality of life. So we started to think about, we have this tremendous amount of data and we were observing a trend. You know, rural populations, little access to internet, little access to other communities seems to be affected seems to be no affected, sorry. Whereas, you know, the urban populations were affected in terms of the quality of life. So it was not as much a socioeconomic status as being urban versus rural, okay? So we decided to put all of our data together and we separated our data in rural community versus urban communities. And if we look at malocclusion, all of us in the rural communities, they did not affect their quality of life at all. This is some of the communities, but when we talk about the urban communities, yes, it was affecting their quality of life. The same with carries in the rural communities, we don't see any effect. And when we talk about the urban communities, we do. A direct proportional effect in quality of life. So this is what we can say after 4,000 subjects it seems like socioeconomic status, gender, age, 
does not affect their quality of life. One of the determinants of um, the impact of quality of life in caries and malocclusion is directly proportional to being in an urban uh, versus a rural um, community. So in summary, we have, um, have three countries, eight size, more than 4,000 subjects, 80 variables, and we have just finished data collection. The last community that I just came back from um, at the beginning of the year was in Cusco, Peru. This is an Inca population, but again, located in a city where we see an incredible amount of tourists. So although ethnically they belong to, the, uh, you know, to the, an indigenous community, they were located in within Cusco, so we expect to find uh, the same type of results. So we can say, with the data that we have so far, is that caries and malocclusion affect the oral health-related quality of life in rural populations, and that several regions in Latin America have a high prevalence of caries and malocclusion. Our next step in analyzing the data is that we are going to try to see if there is a relationship in between the uh, nutrition that they have and um, the presence of um, what the caries. Um, you know, we can see some trends, as I shared with you in the Chiapas population, but you know, we have not had um, a chance to analyze the data yet. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time, Thank and you I can entertain any questions. Thank, Thank you. you very much for <coughs>